Org, and we're here with Daniel Abadi, who's an assistant professor at Yale and a co-founder, actually, of, uh, of ADAPT. Right? Thanks very much. Welcome. Thanks, sir. Good to see you. Nice to meet Welcome you. Welcome to the Cube. Appreciate Sean it. Furrier. So, um, third year of Hadoop World, um, it's kind of starting to grow up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this year, sort of, uh, I mean, excitement is uh, is you know a whole another sort of a whole another order of magnitude higher than it was last year, and last year was already very high. So certainly, um, you know, it, it's very clear that Hadoop is taking off, and uh, it's really fun to be part of it. So um, I understand that uh, just from looking at your background, you did a, a dissertation on Columnar, which l led to the founding of Vertica. So you, you worked with Stonebreaker. Uh, I did. Yeah, um, he's been on the Cube, Michael Stonebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> Cube alumni. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, he's been, uh, um, yeah, at MIT, uh, I worked with both uh, Sam Madden and Mike Stonebreaker uh, on database systems. Uh, so, uh, actually when I started at MIT, I was working on streaming database systems. There was a, um, a project called Aurora and another project called Borealis. And those uh, actually became a company called Streambase. Uh, and then after, after that project was uh, sort of winding down, at around 2004, um, you know, a, a bunch of us at MIT uh, decided to so start this project called C-Store. Um, you know, that was really led by Mike Stonebreaker. Uh, and C-Store, um, you know, after, after a while became commercialized to, to Vertica, uh, which was uh, sold last year to HP uh, in, uh, I think it was around February, uh, I think it was actually on February 14th this year it was sold to HP. Um, <clears throat> and then actually at the end of my time at MIT, uh, I worked on a, a sort of high transactional, so distributed transactional database called, called HStore, and that became VoltDB. And VoltDB is actually here at, uh, at Hadoop World, they have, a, they have their own booth. So, um, so definitely, you know, being around Stonebaker all those years, uh, you know, I learned, I learned so like much. You're a startup machine, you, you're like, just get your hands in there. So yeah, I mean, I, it's, uh, you know, uh, so once I, once I, uh, which I saw Stonebaker start three companies while I was, when I was at MIT, you know. Hey, I, I can do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so, so. so let's, let's talk Did about. Did you start when you were 13, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I look very young, but I'm older than I look. <laughs> <laughs> you, look young, you look young, it's great though. But let's talk about the, that whole dynamic of, there are a lot of tech geeks, a new generation of, you know, MIT, you know, tech weenies, Berkeley, Stanford, Harvard, a lot of math, a lot of computer science. What's the thing that attracts the alpha geeks on this, whole area. I mean, that, I mean, it's going mainstream now, so there's obvious reasons now. But back then, when you're doing all this, what was that one thing? Was it because you can solve hard problems? It was fun to play with? What was the kind of thing that got you going? Yeah, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, um, so I got into database systems actually when I was an undergraduate still. Uh, and, you know, to speak personally, I just found the research very interesting. So, I mean, ultimately, you know, it's, it's sort of very clear that data is becoming sort of the center of the world. Right, so you know, ultimately, you know, any sort of IT organization, um, you know, it, it, it's it's really around like how sort of how do you store and how do you process your data. Um, so you know, if you control the data, you really control the company. You control the business sides of things. You really you it's, it's uh, you really sort of are in the center of everything. So uh, so you know, so therefore, you know, <laughs> it became natural to actually want to focus some research on on database systems. So you know, I started as an undergraduate, um, and then eventually went to MIT to work with Stonebreaker and Madden and. Uh, and then from there, you know, things just sort of, you know. A lot of these concepts are like combination of math, autonomous theory. So it's a little bit of a blend of CS and math, right? Yeah, it's true. It's yeah, I mean, certainly. Uh, I mean, historically, databases, you know, have, have a very good uh, theory foundation. Um, so you know, from the time of Ted Codd with the relational model, um, you know, that, I mean, that was a theory paper. Uh, but you know, but but one thing certainly, uh, and I think to, to go back to Peter's question, what really attracts alpha geeks is that, you know, yes, there's a bunch of theory, but you can also build something. You know, I mean, you know, as part of my PhD, you know, I, I got to be involved in building three systems that actually all three were released open source, um, and all three were used, you know, uh, you know, to some extent either by other researchers or by the industry before they were commercialized. Uh, and so that I think that's, uh, you know, I, I think the opportunity to build real systems uh, is, is is very attractive to, you know, to to sort of a, a young student, you know, like, like, like myself, who's sort of thinking about what he wants to do, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's nice to think about, it, nice to write theory papers, but ultimately, you really actually want to build something. Well, and then small. you add demand for these systems, these new systems, and right. you have a market. Right. Now you got a ton of venture capital pouring in. Right. I mean, it's pretty pretty awesome, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, I had no idea the level of sort of the, the, the size of the market when I was, uh, you know, you thinking did. about going into a PhD program. I, you know, I, mean, I thought it was interesting, I thought it was pretty cool, but I didn't know it'd be this, I didn't know it was, you know, a multi billion dollar industry. Um, and I didn't even know what multi billion dollar industry meant actually <laughs> um, so you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so but you know you uh, over time it's good you to have the blinders the on you know <laughs> from the whole outside influence right absolutely know, the, the clause of my you know capitalism 
yeah. you know, building, <laughs> just go out and build some good stuff, right? That's right, I mean, that's right. So what's your advice to, sh to folks out there that are out there? I mean, obviously, you know, Cloudera just got another 40 million, Hortonworks is bulking up with financing. Anything that moves that has Hadoop on it's going to get funded, XL Partners has got 100 million. What's your advice to folks out there? Just ignore the money, just build a good product and kind of then address it later? I mean. Uh, You've done it I mean, a few times. I mean, I mean, it depends who you're advising. You know, if you're advising students, um, you should definitely ignore the money. You should work what you what you find interesting, what you find passionate about, and uh, you know, and, and otherwise, I mean, you know, to, to make it through a PhD program and you work in something you're not interested in is it's just not, it doesn't work. You get you, you burn out very quickly. Um, but uh, but but once you graduate and now you want to start a company or you want to. Uh, uh, you know, you want to join a startup. Um, you know, then you have to worry about money. I, I, I think you have to be aware of uh, of where the money's going and what yeah, yeah. sort of where the excitement is in the industry. Um, so, you know, something like Hadoop, which which has, you know, as you mentioned, you know, uh, something like probably uh, I would say about a hundred million dollars of venture capital invested just in the last few months, at least you know since May. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Uh, you sort of, it's just so obvious that this is the place to be. I mean, if, if you want to do analytical data, database systems, uh, you, you could you could try and do something outside of Hadoop, but you won't get very far. Right now, Hadoop is where the activity is. Um, so any startup you, sh you know any startup that you want to so create really needs to have some sort of Hadoop focus. So Daniel, what are you doing at Yale these days? How are you spending your time? You're an assistant professor there, and then you sort of double as chief scientist at Hadoop. <laughs> so I want to go there, but look, tell me what's going on at Yale. Um, yeah, sure. So Yale, um, so uh, so we, we're sort of expanding our group. Uh, so there's, there's two faculty uh, who are part of the database group. There's myself and uh, a guy named Avi Sobelschatz. So he actually wrote uh, one of the most popular data, uh, most popular textbooks in the in the database industry. Um, so he's uh, so he's you know a real legend in the field. He's been around for a long time. He came from uh, Texas and he was a VP of Bell Labs uh, before joining Yale. Um, so between the two of us, we have a uh, uh, we have you know a very large lab. Um, we have four PhD students. We have uh, something like five, six undergraduates and, uh, and a couple other students who are sort of floating in and out. Um, so, you know, so there's a bunch of projects that we have going on. So certainly HadoopDB, uh, that was what Hadap was called before it was commercialized, uh, was, you know, was a major project. We also have several other projects too, which I, which I think are pretty interesting. So one, one project that we have um, is, is a project called Calvin, which is sort of looking at how to scale transactions. So it's not, it doesn't really fit so much in the Hadoop world, which is more focusing on to data processing and analytics, but, uh, but uh, but still, you know, one key problem, especially in the NoSQL world, is you know how do you how do you issue transactions across you know sort of a thousand machines uh, and, and scale that up? You know, today the, the key value stores don't really support transactions. If you look at HBase, if you look at Cassandra, um, you know, or really any of the popular NoSQL systems, uh, you know, they they, they, they allow like atomic operations on individual keys, but they don't really scale those operations across uh, sort of across you know thousands of nodes. At least not the transaction itself. You know, you can you can have individual updates in thousands of nodes. You can't make sure that all happens at atomically. Um, so you know, so one project that we have going on at Yale is sort of trying to fix that problem. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, we have one paper ready on that, and we're sort of in the in the middle of working another one. I think that's a pretty cool project. Uh, another project which I'm actually going to talk about today uh, here at Hadoop World, um, at, I think it's at 3:30 p.m. Uh, is uh, uh, is sort of a project on graph data database systems. So how do you uh, you know, how, you know. I mean, so we, you know, we basically figured out the relational model. I mean, I think, you know, you know, we, we sort of know how to build a data warehouse. We know how to do data processing at scale for relational data, um, and Hadoop is great for sort of unstructured data. But you know, but now we have graph data. Graph data is becoming very popular. You know, we have we have social networks, we have telecoms companies, we have uh, we have linked data, which is like semantic web. Um, so there's all kinds of data which are now sort of best represented as graphs. So. Uh, so sort of it seems uh, sort of it, it seems like you know the, the one key sort of uh, research thrust that's going to have to happen in the database industry is sort of being able to figure out database systems for graph data. Um, so that's you know I have a student Jaren Huang um, who is uh, he's doing a PhD thesis on that, uh, and I'm going to present some of that work that we've done together um, today at Hadoop World. So that'd be pretty cool as well. So, so there's a term called subgraph pattern matching. That's right. That's right. right. So what we know about social graphs, John, but what, Daniel, tell us about subgraph <laughs> pattern matching. What is that, and why does the world need it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, so I think this is a very common operation people want to do on graphs. So basically.